Hello everyone. Today's topic is a demo of uh, the settings that I use to achieve a stable 5 gigahertz for my 9900K CPU. This is a long awaited, a long requested uh, video by viewers um, on how I achieved a stable overclock as well as how I'm able to achieve low temps uh, for my CPU at 5 gigahertz. Just a brief uh, synopsis of um, my system. Uh, I'll put everything in the description. I'm currently running a, an ASUS Maximus 11 Hero Wi-Fi motherboard. It's a Z390 motherboard, so it's a fairly high-end motherboard. At the date of purchase, it was roughly $300. Um, and as the CP I mentioned, it's a 9900K. For the GPU, I'm running an RTX 2080 Ti um, Liquid Cool Seahawk MSI version. Um, I'm running a Blu-ray drive um, slash DVD burner slash DVD player. Yes, I still use that. Um, and then I'm running a one terabyte uh, Samsung Evo Plus uh, NVMe drive. It's my boot storage drive. As well as you know, play a few games on there as well. Uh, and I have one M M.2 drive as a support drive, as well as uh, I believe a couple of um, SSDs and one mass storage drive. So in total, I have roughly five drives, right? And in addition to that, I have a uh, a Creative Sound Blaster AE5 Plus 5.1 surround sound. Uh, card uh, connected to it is my uh, 5.1 true analog um, headset um, so it gives you true one-to-one -one directional audio uh, in my opinion um, you know modern headset do not even come close to the pristine directional audio this headset provides um, unfortunately it's been discontinued uh, a lot of headsets now are leaning more towards virtual audios uh, but anyway I digress so powering this entire system is an 850 watt PSU without further ado uh, I'm gonna take you into the advanced page now if you're wondering how to get to the BIOS uh, what you need to do is once you boot up your system you want to press the delete button repeatedly or sometimes it can be the F12 key but it's the delete button now if you can see on your screen in the top left hand corner you have um, there are four texts in yellow uh, just giving you an overview of my system what is currently running at what clock speed you can see I have my sys CPU running at 5 gigahertz and the system memory at 4000 megahertz or 4 gigahertz which is out of the box and the CPU cache running at 4.5 gigahertz which is overclocked right so the first thing I like to start off with is with the uh, XMP profile. I set this to two. Um, the reason I set it to two is because I find that it gives me the lowest, um, the lowest timing, as well as the highest, you know, the out of the box highest clock speed. So your mileage may vary. You may not see, uh, you know, more than one XMP profile. Just select whatever XMP profile works for you. So in my case, I select two. Uh, this, you know, shows uh, that I'm running a uh, 4,000 megahertz DDR4 memory, and it shows my timing: 18:22, at 1.35 voltage. This is out of the box configuration. Now for the BCLK frequency, um, I just the default is 100. I just leave it at that. No need to mess with that. For the ASUS multi-core enhancement, you always want to set this to disabled when you overclock it. So I set that to disabled. Um, now, for the SVID behavior, uh, you want to set this to best case scenario. The reason I set it to best case scenario is because it gives me, in my case, it gives me uh, a stable system as well as the lowest amount of temperature possible, right, and besides. Who doesn't want a best case scenario, right? Now, for the AVX instruction, core ratio negative offset, I set it to zero. The reason for that is because I like to lock down my clock speed um, across all cores, across all threads. Uh, so, 
for example, if I was to set it at th the value of three, under a heavy stress test, under heavy load, it would down clock. I can see a clock fluctuation, clock fluctuations of uh, 4700 megahertz all the way to five gigahertz. I don't want that because it can affect, uh, you know, benchmark scores or certain, you know, in certain heavy CPU games, it can af affect your performance. You want your system to run at its peak performance as much as possible. So I set it to zero to get a stable five gigahertz. Now, for the CPU core ratio, you want to set that to sync all cores. And then for the core ratio value, you set it to 50. You can see it, it cascades downwards, showing all cores at 50 or five gigahertz. And for the BCLK frequency, you want to set that to auto. There's no need to mess with that. For the DRAM odd ratio, uh, I set it to enable. There's also disabled, but I set it to enable. Um, you know, I do, I do it because uh, you want to achieve stable memory speed at all time. Uh, and in my case, since I'm running uh, such a high um, frequency memory for 4 gigahertz, um, I find uh, a need for it. So for DRAM frequency, frequency um, it should... Once you start overclocking, it should show the out-of-the-box frequency. In my case, it's 4,000 megahertz. Uh, if you don't see this value, you know, if, if you see, for example, if your memory is a 3,200 megahertz memory or 3,600 megahertz memory, you want to see the value here. If you don't see it, then select it from the drop-down uh, menu. For the extreme tweaking, uh, I set this to disabled. Uh, there's really no, I know it says it may help improve some benchmark performance, but I really don't see any um, any difference uh, in my benchmarking scores. For example, if I'm using Cinebench uh, 23 or 24, or when I'm stress testing games, um, there's really hardly any value, any any need for this. So I set it to disable. For the CPU SVID support, I set it to auto. The DRAM timing. Um, so so let me let me go back to this option SVID support. The reason I set it to auto is because I use uh, software monitoring tools. Uh, one prevalent tool that I use is MSI Afterburner. I like to monitor my CPU uh, clock speed, temps, usage, and voltage. So if you set this to disabled, um, you may not have that option, right, once you're setting up MSI Afterburner. Um, so auto is essentially enabled, but I just set it, I just leave it on auto. For the DRAM timing, um, I leave everything uh, set to default. Uh, you can see I'm using uh, my, for such a high um, high frequency memory, my timings are, are fairly low, they're fairly modest. Um, I'm sure I can, I can get them a little bit lower than that, but there's absolutely no need for that. I just leave it at on to, set to default. Now, this is where it gets interesting, anything starting from the external DIG power control and below are very, very important. Uh, so for the uh, power control, you have several options. Starting with the load line calibration, um, mine goes all the way to level eight. Um, you never want to set this to auto because on the stress, on the stress test, um, on the heavy load, the bias will your, your, your voltage will overshoot. So you can see your temps as high as 95 to 100 degrees Celsius causing uh, an instability, causing your system to either blue screen or restart or the application just shutting down entirely. Uh, so uh, I would say anything between 5, 6, and 7. Uh, for most PCs out there running you know, my system, my configuration, my CPU, 9900K, Heck, even an 8700K or 7700K, you want to start with level 6. Uh, I find this to be the most stable level. Uh, anything above that, your temperatures are going to spike tremendously. Uh, level 5, yeah, the temps are about 8 degrees cooler, but again, my system, you know, becomes unstable, so I just set it to 6. Now, for the sink, AC DC load line with VRM load line. You want to set this option to 
disabled. There are two options, disabled and enabled. I set it to disabled because I like to lock down my overclock. I like to manually um, configure everything. I tell the BIOS what I want, not the BIOS telling me or guessing what my CPU needs, right? So again, this setting correlates with a setting in a different uh, screen. I'm going to show you that momentarily, but you want to set that to disable. For the current CPU capacity, I'm going to set it to the highest percentage or value um, in the dropdown. So mine is set to 140%. Uh, everything else is set to auto except the uh, DRM capability current. You want to set that to 130 as well. So everything else, like I said, is set to uh, auto. So going back to the previous screen, if I go to the internal CPU power management, Intel speed uh, step, you want to set that to disable because you don't want uh, Intel uh, speed algorithm to interfere with your manual overclock. As you can see, it says supports two frequency ranges. You don't want that. You want a locked, stable five gigahertz overclock. Uh, turbo mode, I set that to enabled. Uh, it should default to it, but if not, you can set it to enabled. Now for the um, long duration package, um, you want to set that to the highest value. So if I type in any number and I hit return or enter, um, it shows 4095, right? The same goes for the package window, and the same goes for the short duration package power limit, right? We want to set those to the highest value as possible. Now, a few seconds ago, a minute ago, I mentioned uh, setting the sync ACDC load line power to disable. The reason is because these two values, these two options, AC and DC load line, uh, this is where I'm setting those values, right? 0 0.01, right? So I set it to the lowest possible here that is stable for my system. And for the external voltage, I set it here to disabled. So that's where the correlation uh, resides. For the uh, Tweakers Paradise, there's no need to mess with that. I don't mess with that. I leave everything uh, set to default or auto. Same for the AI features, I do not mess with that. Now, for the CPU core cache current max limit, you want to set it to the maximum value possible, which is uh, 255.75, 255.75. For the ring down bin, set that to auto. Uh, there's no need to mess with that. Now, for the CPU cache ratio maximum and minimum value, by default, my CPU shows 43, right? Again, this is something that comes out of the box as auto, auto, right? Essentially, what if you look at uh, software monitoring tools like uh, CPU Z, Core Temp, or you know any other tool, uh, it should tell you uh, what your CPU cache ratio is. So for me, out of the box, auto means 43, or 4.3 gigahertz or 4300 megahertz. So, since I, this is an overclocking an overclock system, I say I add an additional 200 megahertz. So it's 45, right? Once you set the main, it should automatically adjust the maximum cash CPU cache ratio. Now, for the BCLK aware voltage, you want to disable that. Uh, there's no need to mess with that. It's going to cause severe system instability. So always set that to disable. Um, one thing I wanted to mention um, about the core cache voltage is prior to achieving a stable overclock system, um, several videos that I watched on YouTube as well as forums that I dug through, um, people used were using manual mode. I find this to be very unstable and it requires my system, my CPU tends to run much harder than it should, right? So setting it to whatever value in this case, my system, my CPU requires a 1.35 voltage maximum to achieve a stable five gigahertz. Um, so setting it at 1.35 voltage in manual mode, uh, I would notice, you know, I I I never passed uh, Prime 95 as well as Cinebench, 
as well as certain games that are CPU heavy um, would crash right to the desktop, uh, especially during um, the shader cache compilation process. So ever since I started using adaptive mode, my system has been 100% stable across the board. So I recommend using adaptive mode and then um, I'm using a negative offset. Um, for the additional turbo CPU core voltage, it's a 1.35 volts, like I mentioned. That's what my CPU requires. Your mileage may vary, so your CPU could require less than mine. Uh, I've seen systems, you know, have a stable 5 gigahertz with a 1.3 volts or even lower. Uh, so what I recommend is, you know, you play with this option, right? So you start off with one point, you start off with 1.3 volts, and then um, for the offset voltage, always set that to 0 0.015. Um, so I'm going to divert, revert back to 1.35 volts. So if I go any lower than that, let's say I use a uh, 0, 0 0.02, um, you know, my, my system becomes unstable, like certain applications crash. Um, I have another system that uh, comprises of a, uh, an 8700K. Um, that system for 5 gigahertz stable, it uses a 1.25 volts. So it's right here, this value is 1.25. And I always set this value to 0 0.015, right? So if you have an 8700K machine, a 9900K machine, um, you don't want to go below the 0 0.015. So I'll revert back to 1.35. For the DRAM voltage, uh, my out-of-the-box stable voltage is 1.35. Um, so I just leave it at that. There's no need to mess with that. Now for the CPU uh, VCC IO and the system agent voltage, um, you don't want to leave these values set to auto. Uh, the reason for that is because during heavy stress test, your BIOS would will uh, you know overshoot the voltage. I've seen it go as high as 1.425, sometimes even 1.1.5. You can see I'm in the red. I'm in the danger zone, right? Uh, you, you don't you won't need more than 1.15. You can see I'm it's showing yellow. It's highlighted highlighted in yellow because you know I'm getting up there as far as like uh, regulated voltage right so st your system should be fairly stable at 1.1 for the uh, VCC IO as well as the system agent voltage everything else should be left at auto uh, the DRAM reference voltage again auto I don't mess with that so once you once you're done setting up your overclock uh, just you know go over to tools to tool and create a profile um, so right now I have a profile called 5 gigahertz uh, save it to profile 1 and then just restart your your bias right so that would be F10 um, so just to give you a recap um, as I mentioned my system is fairly stable uh, this took me several hours, countless hours to figure this out I'm gonna provide um, in the description, um, my full spec, my full uh, PC, um, as well as, you know, I'm thinking about selling it. So if you're interested, just let me know. Uh, I'm going to leave everything as it is, overclocked, both the CPU and the GPU. Um, so I'll also link that in the description if you're interested, just let me know. Um, yeah, if you have any question as well, let me know. Um, yeah. This system has been going strong since 2019, and maybe I'll maybe I'll sell it anytime soon if you guys are interested. If not, hey, it's still serving its purpose. Take care, everyone.